A very good morning to one and all of you. Today, we're going to discuss about CRP, C-reactive protein, uh, its clinical significance, and how does it help to improve patient outcomes. It was so named because it reacts with the antibody against the somatic capsular polysaccharide, also called as C polysaccharide of streptococcus pneumoniae. It is useful for evaluation of acute phase, inflammatory, infectious, and autoimmune conditions. CRP test is not diagnostic. It only tells us whether inflammation is present or not without identifying the source of inflammation. We should use this information in conjunction with signs and symptoms, physical examination, and other tests to determine if patient has acute inflammatory condition or a flare-up of existing chronic inflammatory state. A reference range, C-reactive CRP 0 to 10 milligram per liter, HSCRP, High sensitivity CRP, less than three milligram per ml. Higher value indicates more severe disease. See, both CRP and HSCRP are essentially the same, but HSCRP measures very small amounts of CRP in the blood and is ordered in seemingly healthy people to assess their potential risk of heart problems. CRP is increased in acute or chronic inflammatory conditions, tissue necrosis or tissue injury, ischemia or infection of tissues, infection, inflammation, metabolic syndrome, malignant tumors, acute pancreatitis, post-surgery, burns, leukemia, tobacco smoking, hormone replacement therapy, and in obesity. CRP is decreased in exercise, weight loss, moderate alcohol consumption, on medications like statins, niacin, and fibrates. What are the limitations of CRP? Sex and race affect the levels of CRP. African Americans have higher levels than Caucasians. Women have higher levels than men. Collection, whole blood, serum plasma, red top tube, hemorrhoid hemolytic and lipemic specimens. And please analyze stress specimen. So always, the sample should be immediately processed by the lab. Otherwise, it lead to false CRP levels. Methods, nephlometry, perblimetry. Radio immune diffusion, radio immune assay, enzyme immune assay. It is an acute phase serum protein. It is a surrogate for pro inflammatory IL 6. So you'll get uh, by using CRP. So you'll get the same information you get by doing an IL 6 level. CRP is very cheaper test, IL 6 is very costlier test. Sensitive liver, also by endothelial cells, smooth muscle cells, and also by adipose tissue. CRP activates the complement system. Significant increase in CRP indicates clinically relevant inflammation. Half sense of high CRP helps in exclusion of inflammation and infection. Sequential CRP may provide an accurate measurement of inflammatory changes in response to treatment. So you can get a daily CRP level. CRP is very helpful in assigning a non-inflammatory cause to a markedly abnormal ESR. HSCRP can, can be a marker of atherosclerosis. It is an important predictor for cardiovascular events like myocardial infarction, cerebral vascular accidents, sudden cardiac death, peripheral vascular disease. In acute coronary syndrome, CRP predicts mortality and also cardiac complications. What are the indications of CRP? So when we suspect an inflammatory state, like in vasculitis, autoimmune disorders, SLA, psoriasis, infection. So you can order CRP along with ESR. So you can order CRP in newborns when you suspect infections. So you can order CRP in chronic inflammatory states like rheumatoid arthritis and SLA. So to check, you can order serial CRPs to check the, how is the response to the treatment. HSCRP for pre prevention of cardiovascular events and also in follow-up in patients with uh, acute coronary syndromes. CRP being a marker of acute inflammation is elevated 100 to 1000 fold after infection or trauma. And thus for its utility in cardiovascular risk assessment, it should be measured two times of at least two weeks apart in a metabolically stable state post-infection or sepsis because its half-life is at least 19 days. Universal HSCRP screening is not warranted except in patients with an intermittent high Framingham risk score. So these are the references and future readings. And if you have any doubts, please drop a comment uh, below this uh, YouTube video. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel and please ask your colleagues to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, I'll be making more videos, more medical videos. Thank you.